block party um, grandma's recipe box. We're all ready for this again. It's January block, block number five. So uh, just simple tips. Um, you probably have already seen this before and I've done these, but I'm just going to go over this and refresh you. And I do have a couple other points to share with you. So I'm gonna show you what they look like. Uh, eight flying geese blocks, that's all it is, so you just repeat it. It's a great way to learn because you're just doing the repetition over and over again, making the same thing. It's a great way to learn the, the, the technique and um, build your skills on that. That's the apple crunch. This is the Waldorf salad. And this one is icebox cookies, and I will explain that a little bit uh, pretty soon. So this, this block, if you wanted to give it a name, uh, one of the names for it is Dutchman's Puzzle. When you take the eight flying geese and put them going in all four different directions into a block like this. So anyway, um, so to make the flying geese, this month it's a little different because I have you cutting the squares and rectangles, the exact measurements, so there's no room left for squaring up. Um, the reason I did that is that a lot of patterns you use, especially for you beginners who haven't had a lot of experience, you know, um, just kind of finding new skills, um, a lot of the patterns you come across are, are done that way. They're designed with the, the measurements exact. So what a lot of us will do is just change those measurements and make them bigger. But this one is, is exact. So I want to go over that with you. Okay, another unique thing about this is that um, the background is the geese in this. Okay, in case you didn't know, in a flying geese unit, the, the big triangle is the geese and the small triangles are the sky. Okay, so typically we will do the geese in a print and the sky in the background print, unless it's for uh, a star block or something where you have the points. But if they're done as geese, usually the geese is darker. But in this case, the geese are lighter, just to shake things up a bit and make it fun. But um, on here, I, um, just drew the line and that's what your instructions will tell you to do. So you're going to sew on this line. Now just to remind you, to help this turn out um, to the correct size, if you will sew not on the line but just next to it, so you don't want your stitching to be, um, you don't want to space between the line and your stitching but have it right next to it. So it's just a hair to the inside and that way when you press it open um, you're more likely to get it to come all the way over because you have this little hump here from your seam. All right, does that make sense? So if you kind of do that, um, that'll help for that technique. So you'll sew that on. These are both um, drawn, so they're ready to go for that method. Okay, the other method I want to review with you is the folded corner clipper. Okay, so you take the folded cor corner clipper, put your square, on your rectangle and we're going to trim this up. Okay, this is three and a half inch square, so your folded corner clipper is going to go on there on the three and a half inch line. So this line here is right on the edge, that's right on the edge up there. I'm going to trim this like that and it's ready to sew. So you're going to sew your quarter inch seam along there. Um, so be sure your stitching starts at the, the corners and goes all the way across as it does here. All right, see that? Okay, now when I did this one, I had a little trouble getting it to come out right. So I don't know if you can see that in there, but it didn't come out. So what I should do is go back and sew over that again so that my stitching line goes right to the corner and makes a nice sharp corner there instead of looking like that. All right, and then that will be pressed open and then you will take your next square after that's pressed, put this on here going this way, this goes up, this goes down, don't go like that or that. You're gonna go like this and I'm not gonna trim it because I haven't pressed it yet. And you're gonna trim right across here and then sew the other side, okay? So that's what I've done here. So the other side, and then I will press that, that direction. 
here. I want to show you on these. When you're doing this with a cut, the exact measurements, you often don't have uh, everything coming out just right. Okay, so here I sewed this on, and I probably need to go back and sew that over so that my point comes out just right there. Okay, otherwise you're going to have it, have it uneven across the top, and you've probably experienced that a lot, having them uneven. This one here came out uneven, but it's in the other direction. It's a little bit lower. Okay, so when you get your block all done and all pressed, you're going to take a ruler, and since this is a six and a half by three and a half, because that's what you cut your background rectangle, I'm going to lay that on there and make sure it's three and a half by six and a half. And so um, there's no need to trim it up because um, it there's nothing going off the edge. But when I sew this to another unit, I'm going to pretend like it's a full three and a half, and I'm going to do my seam allowance. So it's going to be a little narrower seam allowance right across here. So when I lay it with something else, it will look more like this, where it isn't matching all the way because I didn't have it um, wide enough. And that will help it to turn out more accurate after the next step. Okay, so then I'll put this on here again and see if it's six and a half inches. And I've gone a little bit over on the six and a half inch part. So all I have to do is look at how they have any left over, but that really helps in putting these together and helping things turn out more accurate. I have just a little bit to shave off of here. That's it. And it looks much better. Okay, so um, you'll make eight blocks for each block, eight, eight uh, units for each block, and then you're going to sew them together in twos, and then sew these four units together. Okay. Oh, let me show you the um, the simple folded corners ruler. So if you're going to use that instead of the folded corner clipper, I'm going to put this on here. Okay, again, it's three and a half inches. So I'm going to take this ruler and I'm going to put the three and a half inch markings right on the edges of the three and a half inch square. Now you really can't mess that up because if you wanted to do, if you tried to do three, it's not going to come out up here. If you went this way with um, three, it's not coming out here. So the only way you're going to know, you got three here, this is three and a half. This is going to meet up here, and this is going to meet down here. The, the edge of the ruler with the edge of the fabric on the side and the top. Okay, hold it down, cut it, and it's just like with the folded corner clipper. Okay, so uh, sew it, press it, and then repeat that on the other side. Okay, now another thing you can do if you don't want to follow these directions for cutting and you, and you want to... Um, have them a little oversized where you can trim them up. If you have a folded, um, what do you call it, ultimate flying geese or a wing clipper or block lock ruler that's a flying geese one and you want to square it up, you can oversize using this method. And I will have these on the website or I'll have them available where you can get them unless you want to write them down now. But for the three by six inch finished block, um, Instead of cutting your squares three and a half inches, you'll cut them three and three quarter inches. Instead of cutting your rectangles six and a half inches, you'll cut them six and three quarter inches. Okay, so I got that information off the Flying Geese uh, instruction sheet. So that's how you can um, do that. They'll be oversized, and then you take your Flying Geese ruler and square them up so they're exact. Or you can do it with your regular ruler too. Okay, another point I wanted to remind you of, when you're sewing these right here at the corner, and you're gonna start out with your needle in right here. You know how so many times your needle just pushes that down in there um, or causes it to jam up and everything? Use a little uh, leader or a starty or whatever you wanna call them, but take a little scrap of fabric Run it, run the uh, needle and 
press your foot over it. When you come to the edge, then just leave it there and go right into your block and you're much less likely to have your needle pushing this down in there. And that will make a nice smooth uh, start to your seam allowance. Another thing about it is that if it's going to nest up like that when you get started like it did here, it's better to do it on here than on here. And you have all that junky looking thread on this little scrap instead of on your block. Then another tip I want to give you for the um, icebox cookies, so I decided to shake it up a little more and do it uh, a different layout. Okay, so I have all the reds going one way, all the greens going another way. And um, you don't have to do that. You can do it the traditional way if you want to, or if you're making one of these others and you want to lay it out this way, lay, it, lay all four squares out on the table and play around with it and see what you think and, and how you like it. You could even mix them all up. You don't, ha don't have to have um, all the colors together. You might see how it looks lay mixing up all these colors and laying them out. But um, another different thing about this one is there's four different backgrounds instead of one. So we've included a little sheet and with your um, kit, it'll be in there uh, reminding you to do that. So you're going to have four backgrounds here cut into squares. So you'll cut two rectangles out of each of these, two times eight, two times four is eight. And then you'll cut four squares out of each of these as you do for your others anyway and then um, put them together. Um, I wouldn't go mixing this up too much. It's already kind of got a lot going on there. So um, it, it's nice to keep it consistent with the same color with the same background. And that was a lot of fun. I really, really like the way this one turned out. And then you can have either side be right side up. Um, and so here's your kits. This is what you'll be picking up this week for your uh, three different colorways. And we'll look for you in here in the shop or you'll be receiving yours in the mail soon. So thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.